Hello everyone, this is Miguel Greenberg and we are now in part 6 of my quick React tutorial. Uh, the topic of this part is contexts and to show you this feature I have created an application that is a little bit more uh, complex than the ones that we've seen so far. Uh, and the, the reason why I want to do this is if, if I show you contexts in a in a very simplistic application, you are not going to understand the the purpose of it. So um, so with, with this application, th this is going to be very clear. Uh, so what we are going to do in this uh, in this part is to build a a very small uh, user login system and. Uh, we are going to see how contexts uh, really help to simplify that work uh, a great deal. Um, so the uh, the application that I created has uh, four components. Uh, the top level component uh, is called app as always and this component has the uh, the title and then two subcomponents uh, a navigation bar in a component called navigation and then a header uh, in a component called header. Uh, the navigation bar component uh, is, is simple, uh, a simple wrapper for a login form. Uh, in a complete application you will have uh, other links here in addition to the login form uh, but I'm, I'm trying to keep this example uh, you know, as simple as possible. Uh, so, so we have a login form. And then the, the header component has the, the please login message. Now in the navigation, the login form is implemented as an a HTML form, and you can see it uh, here in the, uh, in, in the rendered version of the application. Um, so the goal is to, uh, to enter a username here and submit the form. And then when that happens, we want the please login message to change to welcome and then the username. Uh, so, so this is a very minimal example that is representative of what you would do in a, in a real world application where after you log in, you have to update a number of parts of the page to show the uh, information about the user. Uh, so um, before I begin, I'm going to show you uh, or, or I'm going to discuss a little bit the form uh, because I haven't shown any any forms yet. So uh, to implement this form, I've used a, a very simple approach. The, uh, the render part of the component renders the, the standard HTML form and then uh, I have an on submit event for the form object. And I also have a ref for uh, for the the text input uh, component, and we, we've seen refs before. So this ref, which is up here, is going to be used to extract the uh, the username, the, the whatever I type in the form or in the field when the form is submitted. So uh, the on submit uh, event handler needs to call the prevent default method on the event and this is so that the browser does not submit the form for real. As I'm sure you know, browsers uh, want to submit forms as network uh, requests or HTTP requests. So in this case, because we're handling the form in the client side, we, we want to, uh, to prevent that submission from happening and this is done uh, this way uh, in plain JavaScript. Uh, so for now, I don't have anything else here. So the only thing that I'm doing is I'm logging the the name, the username that was entered in the form. Um, so we can we can give it a quick try, and yeah, this is this is working great. Um, so to keep the example simple, I did not add a password to this form, uh, and I'm also not going to send a request. To, to do the login. Uh, so these things you will do right here in the uh, in the on submit event handler. Here you will you will send a request to your backend, sending the username and the password, and then you will wait until you get a response. And then in the callback 
from this request, you would do the actual login procedure. Uh, so to, to simplify this example, I'm going to do it directly here uh, without doing the, uh, the trip to the server. But, uh, but that doesn't really change anything. So, so it should be the same when you do it for real. Uh, so anyway, this is the application. Now we need to implement the, uh, the user login. So uh, let's go back to app. And uh, if you think about it, uh, the, the problem that we have is that we somehow need to share information between the login form, which is underneath navigation, and the header. Uh, the, the login form will, will get the username and then we'll perform the login uh, procedure. And then at that point, we want the header to update. So, so we need to share that username uh, between the login form and the header. So uh, with the elements that we know so far, uh, the way you could do that is by creating a state variable. And the the location for that state variable should be a place high enough that is a parent of all the subcomponents that need access to this information. So in this case, uh, the, the, the common parent for the login form and the header is this component, the app component. So we are going to add the state for the login user here. So let's start with that. So uh, we can call this uh, username and then the setter for the state. And we can initialize this to null, uh, which will be uh, to indicate that there is no, no logged in user. Uh, now, if, if we try to implement this with what we know, now you would need to pass the set username setter function uh, to navigation, and then navigation will have to pass it uh, once again into the login form. And this is so that the login form can set the username when when the user submits the form. And then in the header, we will need to pass the username state so that the header can uh, can show it in the in, in the welcome message. So um, in a real application, if if you do it this way, it's going to be very messy. You're going to have to pass the uh, the the logged in state uh, in this case this username or the set username. Uh, all over the place. There's con usually there's there's many components or parts of the page that will need to update based on the logged in state of the user. So it, it's going to be very messy. So uh, this is the case where contexts really do a good job because they allow you to uh, to create a shared state that is accessible to a group of components uh, without having to explicitly pass those elements of the state. Uh, as, as props. So let's go ahead and create the uh, the context. So uh, let's call it user context react create context. So this is the context. So this this context needs to be available to other components. So I'm going to make it uh, exportable so that then we'll be able to import it uh, in the components that need access to the context. Uh, once again, in case it wasn't clear, I'm, I'm putting the context here because this is the uh, this is the, the component that is a parent of all the other components that need access to this information. So so we, we want to make sure that we do it uh, at a place in the hierarchy that's high enough that includes all the components that need the access. So the way to uh, to make this context uh, accessible to to subcomponents is by adding a wrapper, and the wrapper is the name of your context dot provider. So we're going to wrap these two elements, and this is going to make that um, a context uh, accessible to to these two elements and indirectly also to the children of uh, navigation, uh, which in this case is the login form. So, so now the context is um, successful. Uh, we also need to give a, a value to this context. We, uh, as part of the context, we are going to, uh, to make uh, uh, usually an object. So typically, you, you do this with a JavaScript object. You, you want uh, some, some information to, to be 
the, the data that is exposed by the context. And that is put here as a value. So we're going to put it here. Um, so let's create uh, a JavaScript object to use as the value for the context. Um, so let's call it current user. And um, let's put a username. And let's start simple. Let, let's hard code a username for now. So this is the value, and we expose that here. So so now we have uh, we have a, a, a user context, uh, and then the user context provider uh, shares the current user object, and now we can go to these two subcomponents or any children and access this. So um, let's start from header. Uh, which is a little bit easier. So, so let's add that username on the header. So here we can import the context. So import user context from uh, app.js. And note that I'm using uh, I'm using the curly brackets here because this is not the default exported symbol from app.js. This is just another one so so you have to uh, to use the curly brackets to to get the correct uh, the correct uh, symbol and then with that we can uh, we can get the data so uh, here we can access current user from react use context and we pass user context so we can uh, we can just test this by logging, and you can see here here we have the uh, the current user object. Uh, we we already have access here. So uh, what we can do uh, we can do a conditional here. So if current user dot username is set, then we can say welcome current user dot username and then else we keep the, the please login message okay perfect so this is looking good so now if we go back to uh, to the top level component when we set this to null to null um, then this goes back to the please login message so so we have the header now implemented using contexts very nice okay so um, in reality what we what we want is we want to use this this state here so now we can uh, we can go ahead and set the, the state right there uh, because the state is currently initialized to null we show the uh, the message for the uh, for for when the user is not logged in. So now we can go into form, and here we can also get the context. So user context equals uh, React use context user context. Uh, we need to import user context from app.js and now we we need to log the user in so to log the user in uh, typically you, uh, you you have a uh, a function that uh, that will be where, where you implement the uh, the update for the state so in the current user uh, context we can add here uh, a function let's call it uh, login user and this function will receive the username uh, and will actually set the state to the logged in user uh, I have a conflict here so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it underscore username 
so here what we can do is set username and we set it to the argument that was received so now uh, our context is sharing two things the username element which we can use in the in the header component to uh, to update the uh, the contents and then a function that performs the login procedure and this function now can be used from the login form to do the login so here we can do uh, user context dot login user and we pass username dot current dot value and this will invoke the function from the current user context that we have defined here uh, which in turn will set the other uh, username state and that should ripple through the application and update everything to the right thing uh, so let's give it a try so let's say Miguel login and now we have a welcome Miguel uh, so if I change this it, it's updated uh, so this is basically the simplest uh, form of login that I could come up with uh, we can we can keep going we can do a logout now if you want so for the logout you will be exposing another function um, that will perform the correct state update so username and this time we set it back to no so now now we have three things in our context so uh, let's see we can uh, we can go to the navigation bar and uh, so I have a login form I guess uh, something that we can do here um, so we could say that um, let's put it a wrapper around this so if current user dot username uh, is no we are going to do the form what we what we were doing before and then else we can do uh, let's say we can do a button that says log out let's see if this works Uh, what's going on here current user oh I'm sorry this should be uh, right current user to be consistent let's call it current user current user and uh, where current user so now if I log in now I have a logout so for this button I can say on click and um, yeah logout uh, actually for this one this this is simple enough that we can we can invoke directly current user dot logout user so let's try again login and logout perfect so there we go uh, this is probably uh, one of the most complex topics in uh, in react uh, I hope I made it simple enough that you can at least uh, start to understand it and you, you should definitely play with this example uh, uh, which you have the link in the in the description uh, to, to familiarize yourself yourself with this and uh, hopefully uh, understand it better so anyway, I hope this was useful and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.